Tonight, French fare meets local flair at La Pinou as two diners go head to head and serve up the chef's signature tomato vine pasta. Brought to you by Stella Artois and Toronto Life. This is Chef Artois. Hi, I'm Pei Chen in the entertainment district where La Pinou is the new French bistro on the block. Inspired by romance and celebrated cuisine, La Pinou is Paris reimagined. Antique oil lamps, lush velvet couches, and an ornate marble bar will make you feel like you're in France. La Pinou is a neo bistro. Head chef Jamie Ulrich is a hardcore locavore. Exciting flavors combined with classic French cuisine. He changes the menu at La Pinou to showcase seasonal ingredients from local growers. But not even five months into their culinary journey, all restaurants and bars in Canada closed down due to COVID-19. To make it through the pandemic, La Pinou had to pivot. They sold bistro boxes for pickup and delivery. La Pinou's customers could enjoy fine dining from the comfort of their homes. Each bistro box contained three courses of French classics made with their freshest ingredients. Jamie wasn't sure what to expect once La Pinou was able to reopen, but happily, he's seen a resurgence in people wanting to dine out, thanks to the great food and genuine hospitality of restaurants like La Pinou, but also to the best-selling Belgian beer in the world. Stella Artois. Stella Artois created Rally for Restaurants. It's an initiative for bars and restaurants to sell gift cards online, offering locals a way to support their favorite spots that were forced to temporarily close. Any establishment across the country can sign up so their customers can go online to purchase gift cards. As a way to thank people for their support, Stella Artois adds an extra $10 to the value of each gift card. And tonight, Stella is giving away a prize package worth $1,000 to someone right here at La Pinou. Good evening, everyone. I'm Pei Chen, and I want to welcome you to La Pinou. We are really excited to welcome you here. We're going to enjoy some food, but we're also hosting a cooking competition. So two of you in the room will be competing for the title of Chef Artois. So don't get too comfortable. <laughs> Some of you look really relaxed, like it's not gonna be you, but it could be actually any two of you in this room. Head chef Jamie Ulrich selected one of his signature dishes. The home cook who recreates the best version of Chef Jamie's dish will win the title of Chef Artois along with a $1,000 prize pack courtesy of Stella Artois, Toronto Life, and Rally for Restaurants. The two competitors are Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Danton Lamar <laughs> and Ashley Hazard. <laughs> Ashley, how are you feeling about cooking here tonight? I'm very excited. I grew up going to France a lot as a kid, so this will bring me right back home. What is your go-to dish when you're cooking for other people? I'm a hodgepodge melange, so there's no method to my madness. And how do you perform under pressure in terms of cooking? Like, everyone's watching you tonight. <laughs> I don't know, we're gonna find out. Danton, how do you feel about cooking at La Pinou tonight? It'll be my first time actually trying to make French food to impress somebody. Ooh, <laughs> who do you think is the most important person here to impress? Well, I guess you? I would normally say my girlfriend, but apparently <laughs> it's you tonight. <laughs> but the one person you really have to impress is Chef Jamie, because it is his signature dish that you will be recreating. Woo! Hello. All right, welcome guys. Tonight, the dish that you will be making will be our tomato leaf garganelli. It is a hand-rolled pasta with a beautiful pomodoro sauce. First of all, do you know what garganelli is? Um, Pop quiz. It's a noodle. <laughs> He's going to win. Chef, why did you choose the tomato vine garganelli for the contestants to make? We use the ingredients start to finish, so it's a really good example of how we approach every dish here. And then we also source local ingredients like pickled ramps in there, which we foraged earlier this year. We did make a video of him creating his tomato vine garganelli, so we want you to pay close attention because there's a lot of information there that will help you out as you battle it out for the title of Lappy News Chef Artois. The tomato leaf garganelli kind of embodies what we're trying to do here at Lapinu. Local ingredients and farmers. In its components, it's very simple. Technically, it's going to be challenging. We make tomato leaf puree from the vines that we get from the tomatoes. Add that to the semolina, all-purpose flour, and eggs. And then we make a pasta dough with that. Start with the dough, because that's going to take the longest amount of time, and you have to let the dough rest for 20 minutes, half an hour at least, and then you have to hand roll it. So I think that's going to be their toughest challenge. 
From there, it's smooth sailing. It's your pasta sauce. Olive oil, pickled ramps. It's basically a wild garlic. Take your cherry tomatoes, cut them in half. High heat onions, a little bit of white wine. Add a little bit of butter at the end. And then a local Gouda. Instead of importing parm, it's nice to be able to use a plant from start to finish. You'll see it for yourself. It's beautiful. I started cooking when I was 10. My dad was an Italian chef, and he taught me a lot of the basics. I mean, to be fair, I got this. I'm like the cheerleader of competitors. I don't have to be the one to win so long as I get to participate, I'm happy. Do you want to win this? I mean, I'd love to win this. <laughs> You'll have 60 minutes to recreate Chef Jamie's tomato vine garganelli. He's gonna judge your dish based on presentation, technique, and of course, flavor. Are you ready? As ready as we'll ever be. I'm used to competition. I like to think I'll thrive in the moment. 60 minutes on the clock, now. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like the video gave me enough information to go with. So we've got this type of flower, and then we've got this type of flower, and I genuinely don't know which one we're popping in. I did not remember exactly what I was supposed to be doing. Oh no, that's a lot. Now it's all out. I never thought about how making pasta under pressure would actually feel. Kind of like I'm being boiled in my shirt, but hopefully I don't look too sweaty. We're off to a good start. There's gotta be something to mix this up with. Do -do -do. Is there a whiz? I'm just using my hands. <laughs> I bring years of sauce making experience. How do you get it in? This is much harder than I anticipated. I did not expect that the pasta would be the part that would take the longest to do. This looks kind of dry. I did not measure the liquid ingredients for the pasta. What I do is just, you know, throw stuff together and it works out. Oh, that's so dry. Let's roll with it. This gives me so much respect for Italian grandmas. Cured ham, comte cheese, caper aioli, home-baked focaccia roll. The only time that I'm rolling things out is when I'm making Play-Doh for my kindergarten class. All righty, how are things going over here? I feel like this is a little too dry. I don't actually know. I, it looks a touch dry. Yep. I did not weigh it. I, uh, I just eyeballed it. And pasta is obviously not one of those things you can do that with. Let's try this again. Don't suck. That's the key thing. It's what I've heard my whole life. Just don't suck. Hi, how's it going? Not feeling confident, but I'm very bemused. Do you feel it looks like the one that was in the video? I feel like nothing could look like what I saw in the video because that was pure magic. Checking in with the competitors, first step on the dough, which is the most important part. I saw some uh, irregularities. My squares aren't really squares. If I were kindergarten teaching this, I, I can't say that you get a passing mark. I'll be judging on consistency. So they're going to be hand cutting one half inch by one half inch, rolling them evenly. That's definitely a lot different. Mine look like cannolis. Maybe I'll invent something that he'll like more. I do think I have a bit of advantage, though. I don't know if she let her dough sit. Oh, hi. How you doing? What's going on over there? Oh, you know, chilling. Just figured, <laughs> I, figured I'd come see where you're at. How about you? Where are you at? It's taking a nap right now. Uh-huh. Oh, oh I, you're I, doing the picky thing. I the 25 minutes. I remember that. <gasps> Helping. I'm going to put them in a little house. Cheers. We're going to pretend like nobody saw. I did forget to let my dough set. Not my proudest moment. So how's it going? Going great. <laughs> Is it? I mean, you know. The new versions, you know, it's here, it's greener. You look like you were relaxing a bit too much. That's why I came by. It takes a 25 minute nap. So I put just a little bit of olive oil in it. I've gone rogue. Ashley, how's it going? We had a little bit of a hiccup to start. Well, you're ahead of Danton, because he hadn't rolled out his pasta yet. Excellent. Oh, fudge sickle. It's looking OK. Thank you. I appreciate your moderate wasn't enthusiasm. It wasn't a full compliment. <laughs> <laughs> this is coming out very strange. All right, guys, five minutes left on the clock. Oh, no. It's coming down to the wire. Garlic kit. It's time to roll. Deep grooves to catch all the sauce. Oh. Drop the pasta, as with any good sauce butter. The sauce is coming together really well. Like, I'm really happy with it. One minute left to finish your dishes. One minute? Oh, no. One minute. Five, four, three, two, one. You're done. Hands up. I think I got the presentation right at the end, and fingers crossed the pasta worked with it. Yeah, I feel like I brought my... B game, I intended to bring the A game. I think the A game got left outside. <laughs> <laughs> Chef, we're gonna have Ashley's dish first. Thank you. Okay. Oh, what do you think of it? 
The first check-in I did, her pasta was looking a little multicolored. So I see that she remade it. It's a very even green. It's colorful. Yeah. Does it look the way you would like it to look? I don't remember putting parsley on it. It looks like the right amount of pasta. The sauce, it looks thick. The noodle's a little, I think, a little under. A little undercooked? Yes. One of the trickier things is to find that balance in cook time. Is the dough as thin as you would like it? No, it is a bit bigger and thicker than I had it. The texture's there, the right amount of egg. The tomatoes were cooked properly, they're not mush. I would have liked a little bit more salt in it. So really, it's just cook time and seasoning. How about for a first try? Not at all. Okay. All right, chef, this is Danton's dish. Okay. What do you think about it looking at it? Ashley's was more eye appealing. The noodles look very big. They are large. Are they about twice the size that they should be? They look like that, yeah. <laughs> a little less saucy as well. I can already tell it feels a little... A little better? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> mm-hmm. You see the white in there from the flour still? Yeah. The ends are cooked, but you can tell when they overlap, that's where you're going to be underdone in the noodle. Yeah. Denton seasoning is a bit better than Ashley's, I feel. It's salted more. I would have liked a bit more of the sauce. Well seasoned. It's tasty. Both the pastas looked really nice. Mm -hmm. Is there a clear winner in your mind? I thought there was going to be one, but after trying the dishes, it's difficult. Ashley and Danton, you both did a really great job with your first homemade pasta and trying to recreate Chef Jamie's tomato vine garganelli. I wish this was going to be a, a much easier decision, but both of you came through a lot better than I thought uh, after the first check-in. So the person who made the best dish tonight was Ashley. Congratulations, Ashley. You win the title of Lappy News Chef Artois, a prize package worth $1,000, courtesy of Stella Artois, Toronto Life, and rallyforrestaurants.ca. Log on, sign out, and stay safe. Thank you for coming. <laughs>